Okay, uh, New South Wales Government has made a commitment to be carbon neutral across the state by 2050. The first stage of that plan is uh, to reach 50% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. And there's a whole range of initiatives across the different sectors, including agriculture and land use. Uh, so Lisa just mentioned the primary industries productivity and abatement program. That's the program that I work with. And this is a key part of the net zero plan, um, stage one. So the New South Wales government is investing $105 million to support carbon activities in the agricultural and land management sector. One of the key actions is capacity building. We've just heard about the on-farm carbon advice program that we're sponsoring, um, but we're also doing things like uh, sponsoring the carbon officer that's just been employed by Riverina Local Land Services. Another key action is supporting priority projects that will demonstrate carbon management. And today, today I'm going to be talking about the Living Carbon Grants that we've just uh, launched. And these are designed to help landholders to do tree planting projects to create carbon uh, credits, but also have some biodiversity improvements and uh, enter into that biodiversity market. So the main uh, five outcomes that we're looking to achieve through these grants uh, one, we want more trees on the ground to absorb greenhouse gases, but also to increase biodiversity outcomes and other benefits. And we're especially looking at threatened species and threatened ecological communities. Two, we want those tree plantings registered as carbon projects and to create carbon credits for the landholders. And we want to show that those carbon credits can be worth more if they've got biodiversity uh, benefits added onto them. So if you sell your carbon credits, then hopefully you can get a higher price as a premium carbon cr credit. Or if you decide to keep the carbon credits for offsetting your own emissions, then you'll be able to uh, promote those environmental benefits that we've been talking about today. Three, we want to improve the knowledge of our on-ground partners, such as local land services, around the carbon and biodiversity markets, and through them to help educate land managers. Four, we want to help landholders to start carbon projects that need a lot of upfront investment, such as tree planting projects. And five, we want to create demonstration sites. We want you to share your stories about the process you went through so that you can help others on their journey. So who can apply for these grants? So these are opening up in pilot regions in the Riverina, the Mid Coast and the North Coast. These are areas that we've developed partnerships with on-ground support partners. So to apply for the grant, you'll have need to have already registered your carbon project with the Federal um, uh, Carbon Credit Scheme, the Australian Carbon Credit Unit Scheme, and you need to be ready to start the project. You have to own the land or be an Aboriginal organisation that has legal rights to the land. We will um, consider some public land, especially if it's going to be, uh, have potential to set up a permanent demonstration site. But public land managers should talk to us first. So what will we fund? So there's a total of $5 million across the three regions, including uh, nominally $2 million for the Riverina region. We're looking at around 50 to 200,000 as the uh, price range for the, each project that the grant funding will support. There's a fixed $5,000 amount for administration to help with the carbon project and the environmental account setup. Uh, we'll up pay up to the full cost of direct seeding, ripping and planting tube stock and tree guards, and up to 50% of the fencing for standard stock fence, and there's some few rules around that. There are some things that we won't fund, and we expect co-contribution from the land managers. And they're generally some of the things that are a bit harder to predict from the start. Things like weed control, ongoing maintenance. Uh, we won't fund the purchase of any equipment or land, um, legal fees. For a full list of these, uh, please refer to the grant guidelines that are available on our Living Carbon Grants website. So the grant process, first of all, talk to your support officer. If you're from the Riverina here, uh, area here, talk to Kate Jenkins. Uh, we've already heard about her from organising the uh, conference today or coordinating that. Um, but yes, yeah, she's now the new project officer for carbon in this region. 
Um, those officers will help you design your project and there's a regional guide on the website as far, as far as you know, the, the recommended planting species and things like that for the Riverina and the other two regions. You'll need to choose the environmental accounting method that you want to use. Um, so we're working with um, Accounting for Nature for this. They'll be able to provide you with help on that as well as the person on the ground. Um, as I said before, you'll have to register with the Clean Energy Regulator and they have a helpline that you can talk directly with them as well. And once you have that information, you can fill in the online application form and submit your application. We'll then assess it and assuming you're successful, then we'll provide you with a funding deed. Uh, we'll get that signed off. And then there's basically a, a list of things that you have to do, which I've summarised on the slide there. But uh, as I said before, look at the uh, guidelines for a full list. But basically, we expect the projects to be finished within about 18 months. So have a look at um, our website. Um, the easiest thing is just to Google Living Carbon Grants. Um, otherwise, see me. I'll have a trade stall over in the, uh, the main room over there. Um, or talk to Kate Jenkins if you're in the Riverina region. Um, and yeah, that's basically it.